Light. I've got a brand new office chair, so it actually means I can put my elbows up like this. And I'm very, very comfortable. It's actually a massage chair because I'm spending more time working in the office now. I want to protect my back, I want to protect a lot of things. If you're interested in ordering the chair, it's a Blisswood, and I will put my Amazon affiliate link in the comment section below so you can go and check that out. Shameless plug done right at the beginning. Another really cool plug. Did you enjoy the video right at the beginning of the show? I thought that was brilliant. Uh, it was one that I caught on TikTok this past week, and it just made me laugh so much to imagine what it would be like in a world where Joe Biden and Donald Trump came together, they shook hands, they were hanging out together. Wait a second, that, that actually happened. Just just don't go away. Former President, thank you very Donald, much. congratulations. Thank you very much. And uh, looking forward to having a, like we said, smooth transition. Do everything we can to make sure you're accommodated, what you need. And we're going to get a chance to talk about some of that today. So. Good. Welcome. Welcome thank back. you very much. And, uh, Thank you very much. And uh, politics is tough. And it's, uh, in many cases, not a very nice world, but it is a nice world today. And I appreciate it very much. And a transition that's so smooth, it'll be as smooth as it can get. And uh, I very much appreciate that, Jim. You're welcome. I mean, what a wonderful thing, whether or not it's just for the cameras, what are, you know, the fact that you could have those two sitting down together after what they have been through to shake hands, to enjoy each other's company, to, you know, be respectful, at least, at least publicly, even inside, if Joe's saying, oh, I hate this guy, I hate this guy, even if Donald's saying inside, I despise this guy, you know, whatever. The amazing thing is they have been able to sit down and put their differences aside and recognize the public have spoken. They don't want Kamala Harris. They don't want the Biden administration. You're going to see a lot of videos today, folks. There's a lot of upset people still in the world, and it gets more and more and more crazy as time goes on. A lot of really crazy things, such as let's let's just let's just pull up some of the stuff that we are we are we're talking about here uh, when we're looking at ah, the disgusting stuff that oh wait hang on we, we haven't got the video apparently we haven't got the video uh can we get the video uploaded that we're looking for <laughs> so what happens when it's live folks when it's live anything can happen so people are still really really upset obviously as to what's going on and one of the people that was really really upset is displaying such behaviors as what we're about to see we're, we're, we're on air we're live we're basically talking about this but people are upset people are upset that's all i can say here we go I mean, I don't know about you, I saw that and I was absolutely disgusted as to somebody's behavior like that, especially shouting and screaming at a young child. Now, you ask, what the heck does that do from a psychological perspective? Well, from a psychological perspective, you know, the girl knows what's going on. That is major trauma that is happening for her. You know, there's, there's no excuse. There's no denial about that. There is major trauma that's going on. Uh, and obviously, the, the parents and the, the security acted in the best way they possibly could. But this is the kind of insanity that people are willing to go to. Uh, we're going to see a video as well momentarily of more insanity. But I wanted to share this little clip with you right now if we've got it sort of zoned up, and it kind of sets the tone for this entire conversation, because when people are asked, why did you vote for Kamala Harris? Oftentimes they can't find an answer, or the answer that they provide is, well, not based on opinion, or not based on fact, but more so on opinion. And 
slightly concerning, shall we say. Trump or Kamala? Kamala. Why are you voting for Kamala? Because Trump fucking sucks. Because she's trying to make the world a lot cheaper to live in. The amount of money that costs to just do anything keeps increasing so much. So do you think that's Biden and Kamala's fault? I think that's always been happening. How much things have cost have all, has always been like increasing. So you think Kamala's going to fix it, even though she's already been VP for four years? What did Trump do? I think he fixed it. Did he? Yeah, I think the economy was way better. Mm. Houses were cheaper. Rent was cheaper. Well, grocery was prices were cheaper. What is Kamala's greatest achievement as VP? I literally don't know. I have no idea. You don't know anything she's done? No, I don't. But she's still the better choice? Yes, because I know a lot of things that he has done. Like, you know a lot of things about Trump that are negative? Yeah. He's racist. He's sexist. Okay, well, what has he done that's racist? Specifically, I don't watch anything with Trump in it. I just see, like, clips. <laughs> I don't watch things politically. So you... Okay, wait, just, just stop there. Okay, so she's saying he's racist, he's this, he's that. She doesn't like him, but she doesn't watch anything politically. She doesn't know really what he's done. So she's listened to opinions from social media influencers, from celebrities, and from the media, but more so from TikTok, to basically inform her entire life, her entire mindset. Very, very narrow-minded, if you ask me, and highly, highly stupid. Uh, there's, there's, there's just not enough words for my outrage, really, on how stupid that that came out as. Uh, but that was the problem for a lot of people. They were saying, you know, well, Kamala Harris, you know, she's she's made things more expensive. She's done this, she's done that. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's getting more expensive. Uh, well, hang on a second. They've been in office for four years, okay? They've been in office for four years, and things weren't getting any better. Do you think they're going to get better? Here's, here's the thing, folks. You can actually predict the future. This is a really cool thing about human beings. It's called uh, a trajectory. Okay, so psychologically, we look at the term trajectory. Now, what that means is if you are behaving in a certain way now and you don't behave in a different way, there's nothing that comes along to interrupt your patterns, your thoughts and things like that. You will continue to behave that way and it will get worse and worse and worse or better and better and better. It depends what you are shooting for. If you are constantly focused on that which you treat to become and you desire to become, then you are going to achieve it. If that is something to the negative, you're going to get the negative consequence. If it's something to the positive, you will get the positive consequence. So you listen to what that girl had to say, and she can't figure out herself, as it seems to be, unfortunately, with this entire leftist culture. We've now had two examples. One, obviously, if you're just joining us, folks, we've seen basically a woman screaming at a toddler and a young girl who basically is basing her opinion all on TikTok. Um, it's just, it, it's crazy. It is absolutely crazy that people in this day and age would actually just base their lives on that. You have to do your research, folks. You have to get into the nitty gritty. You have to do the conversations. You have to do the research. We've got some things that we've uncovered recently that are really concerning with regards to Kamala Harris. And we're going to talk about that later on in the show. Uh, we, we've got another clip here. This is the one that was actually looking for. Um, of, uh, of, of another anti-Trump supporter. Now, forgive the language in this following video, folks. Uh, we, we tend to be a PG show here, um, but uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to edit it in time. But this shows you the level of lunacy, as we've seen that some of the leftist culture are willing to go to. J just check this out. It's a fan. This girl is shaving her head to, to, to protest Trump's election and to fight the patriarchy. Um, does she know that Joe Biden is the guy? No. So I'm sure that Looney Libs, okay, is is uh, you know high up there on Donald Trump's sort of mailing list right now, and he's saying, you know what? Ah, oh, she, she's protesting my 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 inauguration. She's protesting my presidency. Maybe I should step aside. Maybe I should put aside, you know, ch children's rights and an abortion. Maybe I should put a right, uh, you know, the, the 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 ideas and the ideologies that I've got and, and traditional cause and values and stuff. Maybe I should just put all that aside and 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 yeah, like heck she is, or like heck he is. It's got me so frustrated. I can't tell if he's a man or a woman, but. Do you really think that Donald Trump is that interested about someone, you know, shaving their head? Do you really think that anybody really cares? 
This is the level of insanity that we are going to. Let's keep going, shall we? Let's keep going because this is this is just incredible. Um, because leftist, you know, what culture? As someone that actually tried to sit there for many years and defend and try and understand what it is that you're doing, I'm out of excuses. I literally am out of excuses for you. Before I could understand why, you know, you 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 view things in the way that you did. But now, with somebody shaving their head, with someone shouting at a child, with someone basing uh, opinion as fact, but not having any real opinions at all, you know, well, are you are you voting for Trump or are you voting for Harris? Well, I'm voting for Harris because I really don't like Donald Trump. You know, um, I don't know why I don't like him. I just, I heard that he's a racist at one time. I heard that he was a racist. You know, I heard he was a really terrible person. He was just absolutely horrible. And you're sitting there thinking, okay, what are you basing this upon? What is this basis that you, oh, because you heard it in the media and everything that you hear in the media is true, is it? Hmm, interesting. Take a look at this next clip and then, and then we'll, we'll move on from this topic because uh, I, I don't want to spend all of today's show. I want you to leave here with something worthwhile, but take a look at Trump this. or Kamala? Kamala. And how come? Because she's not a bigot. So does that mean that Trump's a bigot? Yeah, and he's kind of an asshole. And he's just not at all about women's rights or really anybody's rights except cis white men. We're not really cis white men. And so he's for me? Yeah, yeah, he's for you. Which, I mean, you know, at least he's for somebody. But he needs to be for everybody. Are there any things that you like about Kamala? You know, because you, you mentioned a lot of things you dislike about Trump. But are there any things you, you like about Kamala? I like how she is for women's rights and gay rights and she is very active in the queer community which is very important to us and what does she do in the lgbtq community like what are some things she does i would say that she promotes rights she talks about people and she talks about the community she spreads awareness which trump does none of what are some things that trump did that make you think he's bigoted <laughs> um well uh, for starters, I mean, would you want anybody making decisions about your body without your permission, like he's doing for women's rights, putting bans on abortion, not letting us make our own choices about our body, what happens to us? He actually just brought it back to the states so that the states can vote on it. He actually doesn't have an opinion on it, really. He just brought it back to the states to where the states can vote on whether they want to have it in their state. Okay. Um, yes, there is that. Okay, and that, so that's your number one issue. That's the biggest reason as to why you're voting for Kamala. Abortion, LGBTQIA, safety. Um. LGBTQIA. There's another letter that's been added to this. You know, I mean, I got stuck when it was LGBTQ or LGBT. You know, I, I could just about remember the fall letter. It's this community aware, just, just to put this out there, that human beings can only hold sort of a maximum of seven things in their head at once. You know, you talk about this with phone numbers. People can hold sort of phone numbers in their head and they, they, they associate by patterns. But to, to start adding more and more labels, and we've got to remember the flags, we've got to remember what we can say and what we can't say, it's, it just gets to the point where you're like, how is anybody, even in the community, meant to thrive and succeed in that environment, really? So there was a number of things that I put out of this, and you can tell I'm passionate i'm energized today folks i've got new lighting i've got a new seat everything's looking good we're passionate and we're energized about this so ah oh dear first of all what i'm 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 oh hello what the heck happened there we we, we just had an explosion of light that just went on there. so let's try i have no idea what happened here folks we just had there we go wow that was a major technical issue yes we have got a green screen behind us you can see as soon as i said that i think god had a funny game there he was just like you know what oh we're just we're just gonna make a little bit of fun right let's get back to the the show shall we before anything else happens so the girl there had said very very openly that you know uh, kamala harris is is passionate about lgbtq right? first of all what i'm discovering about certain communities is they vote based on what is best and right for them. They don't necessarily vote for what's best for the community as a whole. They're looking at it from the point of view of how does this benefit me? And I think a lot of people do that. But they're looking at it from, okay, well, let's see how this benefits LGBTQI. How does this benefit people that are having abortions? How does this benefit people, you know, uh, that they're, they're looking for immigration? They're looking, I'm trying to remember some of the other specific things because I haven't got notes in front of me today, but they're looking for what is best for them. Right. Okay. 
what about what's best for not only them, not only their communities, but now as we are seeing what's best for the entire world, what's best for the entire population? Because that is what was what, what was going on. What happened in the United States was going to have a massive effect on what happened here in the UK. The UK was becoming a third world nation. OK, this is what a lot of people don't know. It was becoming a third world nation to the point that people, as we can see, were even being arrested for quietly praying on the streets outside abortion centers. Now, I've got a lot to say about that later on. But when you see and hear these things happening, folks, it's not just about you. OK, it's not just about you. This was a major, major uh, vote. It really was that was going to dictate and change a lot. OK, if you want to go for the LGBTQI woke culture stuff, as, as I said, Canada will welcome you. They, they absolutely will welcome you. But the thing that was concerning for me was we were going to lose Christmas. We were going to lose values. We were going to lose morals and ethics and standards. More drag queens were going to be allowed in school. And they have the audacity to say, well, why is that a bad thing? Why is it a good thing? Seriously. So let's go forward. OK, so Kamala Harris uh, raises awareness and she promotes rights. She talks, uh, she talks about people. Okay. Podcasts talk about people. Podcasts raise awareness. Podcasts uh, promote rights. What was she specifically doing? Now, did you notice the phraseology when she said, you know, she's very active in our community, which, which we appreciate. And then she, she was asked, you know, well, what is it that she actually does? And she said, I would say that she, well, hang on a second. No, no. If, 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 you've, if, if you know that she is active in your community and you're really, you should know exactly what she's doing in your community. Oh, wait, perhaps you don't know what she's doing in your community. Um, bans on abortion. Okay. So as we saw there, she was misinformed because Trump has put it back into the hands of uh, the states. Uh, each individual state, which is what it was before, they have their own law with regards to abortion. Uh, furthering on from that, she'd said that, you know, that it's terrible. He's banned abortion everywhere. Uh, no, he didn't. That was never his policy. But what he is doing is looking at putting a cap on top of it. So you can't do full term abortions. When she said as well, oh, well, how would you like to be told? How would you like to be told, sugar? You know, just how to deal with your own body. Guess what, sweetheart? It isn't only your body. There's a fact for you. It's a child that's full term. It's a baby. It's a heartbeat. A baby's heartbeat, a fetus's heartbeat begins six weeks after conception. That is scientifically, biblically, spiritually, morally, and ethically wrong in every other sense if a child is murdered after that. If you really don't know, and, I, and again, why would you? Because you haven't done the research, as I have painstakingly done since 2017 over this topic. And as we covered in last week's show, I had people in the church directly, blatantly to my face lie to me and tell me, oh, you know, they don't do the silent scream anymore. Oh, but how come I saw a video in Colorado where a senator was talking to a group of medical professionals and said, does this still happen or not? Yes, it does. Oh, so they're basically taking the baby out piece by piece. Now, I know we seem to cover this stuff on a lot of, on a lot of our show. These are the hot topics. These are the things that are going on. So it is not just your body. It's not just the baby's body. Again, if you want to go back and see the show that we did when I was speaking specifically, that just under a million abortions happen every single year in the United States. 933,000 of them, sorry, 966,000 of them are not as a result of sexual misconduct, abuse, or rape. That means you've got 966,000 that are going forward now. Yeah, there, there could be medical issues. There could be problems. But you know, the most common thing, 57% as, as, as 2017, when I've last looked at the, the, the facts and figures, yeah, it was because they changed their mind. And you begin to start putting together a picture of the kind of people, and as a human behavioral psychologist, that's oh, in, in training, in training, sorry, I got carried away there. A human behavioral psychologist in training this is the kind of thing that I'm designed to look for. We've just uploaded a great book, folks, onto YouTube. We're just about to go to commercial break. But we've just uploaded a great book onto YouTube called How to Analyze People on Site. It was one that was written many, many years ago, but one that is still phenomenal. If you want to be able to analyze people on site by looking at them, by just listening to them, and to know what they're about, this is a phenomenal book that's there. We'll stick a link in there as well so as you can go and check it out and you can see. We're going to jump to commercial break, but when we're back, I got a lot more to say about this, folks, so don't go away. <laughs> 